Welcome back, and thank you for joining me on Be Encouraged. Today we will be talk, taking a look at Revelation chapter 19, 7 through 8 and 14, because there is a promise for church age saints that is important for all to know. That promise is that the church has been promised to return with Jesus when he returns again during his second coming. Remember, we just learned in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 13 through 18, who the church age saints are. Those who repent, turn away from their sins, confess with their mouths that Jesus Christ is their Lord and Savior, and believe in their hearts that Jesus Christ died, was buried, and rose again on the third day according to the gospel. These are those that have an awesome promise of eternal life. They become children of God and heirs to the kingdom. They become part of the church, the body of Christ, and as such have the wonderful promise that the church will be taken out of the world before the wrath of God comes upon it. Church A saints will not see God's wrath. We have front row seats to witness the victory of Christ at Armageddon and his crowning as the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. There's a lot going on in these chapters, and I will attempt to cover most of it here, but it is not my intent to deprive you of getting to know the Lord for yourself, but to give you a glimpse into what we are being taken away from and returning with the Lord witnessing. In Revelation 19, John heard what sounded like a vast crowd in heaven shouting praises of salvation and glory and power belonging to our God. God in his just and true judgments had punished the prostitute who corrupted the earth with her immorality. God had avenged the murder of his servants. Then John heard voices ring out in praises and worship again. And also what sounded like the shout of a vast crowd or the roar of mighty ocean waves or the crash of loud thunder. The time had come for the wedding feast of the Lord of the Lamb and the Lamb's bride, the church, had prepared herself being given the finest of pure white linen to wear, representing the good deeds of God's holy people. An angel said to John, write this, blessed are those who are invited to the wedding feast of the Lamb. Those invited to the wedding feast is not talking about the bride of Christ, the church. The bride is not invited to their own marriage supper. Those invited, those called, are the guests. They are people saved before Pentecost. All believers saved by grace through faith before the birth of the church. They are not considered the bride of Christ, the church, aged saints, but they still are glorified and will reign with Christ in the millennial kingdom. The guests, those called, will also include tribulation saints, believers alive in earthly bodies in the kingdom, and Israel, who will return to Christ in faith during the tribulation. The church age saints that are raptured is the bride during the presentation of the feast in heaven. Then comes the earth for the celebration of the final marriage supper during the millennial reign. And after that, the marriage is consummated. You want to be part of the church, the body of Christ, that is raptured and comes back with Christ as witnesses to all that happens because God's wrath is no joke. John saw heaven opened and a white horse standing there whose rider was named Faithful and True because he judges fairly and wages righteous war. His eyes were like flames of fire and on his head were many crowns. There was a name written on him that no one could understand except himself. He wore a robe dipped in blood and his title was the word of God. The armies of heaven, dressed in the finest of pure white linen, followed him on white horses, and from his mouth came a sharp sword to strike down nations. He will rule them with an iron rod. He will release the fierce wrath of God, the Almighty, like juice flowing from a wine press. On his robe at his thigh was written this, King of all kings and Lord of all lords. John also saw an angel standing in the sun shouting to the vultures that were flying high in the sky, saying to them, Come, gather together for the great banquet God has prepared. 
Come and eat the flesh of kings, generals, and strong warriors, of horses and their riders, and of all humanity, both free and slave, small and great. See, this angel is summoning birds to come and feed on the results of what the king of kings and lord of lords had done in the battle. The Lord's victory is being declared before the battle even happens. These birds are being summoned to feed on the corpses of those who will be struck down at the supper after the battle of Armageddon. Now, I don't know about you, but I would rather witness this than be part of the wrath. I'm just saying. The beast and the kings of the world and their armies gathered together to fight against the Lord, but the beast was captured and the false prophet who did mighty miracles on behalf of the beast that deceived all who had accepted the mark of the beast and who worshiped his statue right along with him. The beast and the false prophet were thrown alive into the fiery lake of burning sulfur. The entire army was killed by the sharp sword that came from the Lord's mouth and the birds had a field day eating the corpses. In Revelation 7, John saw four angels standing at the four corners of the earth, holding back the four winds so that the four winds didn't blow on the earth or the sea or any tree. God destroyed the earth once with a flood and promised to never do that again. Do you know what the element God will destroy the earth with next is? It's fire. Have you noticed all of the wildfires breaking out on the earth? The way weather patterns have been. See, we don't have what would be considered normal storms anymore. Normal rain. There was just news on the other day that I was watching about a fire that killed at least 99 people and wiped out the town of Lahaina in Maui, Hawaii. Have you been outside lately on these hot summer days? And you can probably imagine things being a zillion times worse when four angels at four corners of the earth hold back the four winds so no wind blows on the earth or the sea or any tree. These angels have been given the power to harm land and sea. And John sees another angel come from the east carrying a seal of the living God telling the four angels not to harm the land or the sea or the trees until he placed the seal of God on the foreheads of God's servants. 144,000 were sealed from the tribes of Israel, from the tribe of Judah, Reuben, Gad, Asher, Naphtali, Manasseh, Simeon, Levi, Issachar, Zebulun, Joseph, and Benjamin. These are the redeemed Jews who will play an instrumental part in the salvation of many Jews and Gentiles during the tribulation period. They will be sealed by God and promised his protection while they fulfilled their mission to evangelize the world during that time. They will have God's seal on them, but they will be marked in more ways than one. They will be servants marked on the earth during the tribulation, doing God's will, which will be in direct opposition to what the Antichrist, the global leader during the tribulation, wants to take place. They will be under constant attack by demonic powers and forces of the Antichrist, more than likely suffering hunger, exposure, ridicule, torture, imprisonment, but God will miraculously protect them. John once again sees a vast crowd, too great to count, from every nation and tribe and people and language. And they are standing in front of the throne and before the Lamb. This crowd is clothed in white robes and holding palm branches in their hands, praising the Lord. These are those who died in the Great Tribulation period. They have washed their robes in the blood of the Lamb and made them white. I'm not making this stuff up. Revelation paints a picture for us that says loudly, Receive your salvation now. Don't wait until after the rapture to receive it during the Tribulation period because you want to come back with Christ during His second coming, during His return and witness the wrath, not be part of it. In Revelation 8, John saw the Lamb break the seventh seal on the scroll, and there was silence throughout heaven for about half an hour. He saw seven angels stand before God, and they were given seven trumpets. 
he saw another angel who was given a gold incense burner standing at the altar. He mixed a large amount of incense with the prayers of God's people as an offering on the gold altar before the throne. The smoke of the incense mixed with the prayers of God's holy people rose up to God from the altar and then the angel filled the incense burner with fire from the altar and he threw it down on the earth and thunder crashed, lightning flashed, and there was a terrible earthquake. Again, I ask you, have you paid attention to the weather patterns lately? There is no such thing as a regular storm anymore. And if the destruction left behind by the wildfires we have seen is any indication, the fire being poured out of the incense burner by the angel of the Lord here in Revelation is going to be something you want to miss. John saw the seven angels with the seven trumpets prepare to blow their mighty blasts. The first trumpet blew, and hail and fire mixed with blood were thrown down on the earth. I believe it was April 24, 2020 when a storm came through Bossier City, Louisiana where I live and my house had $30,000 worth of hail damage. The truck had $15,000 of hail damage and the insurance just totaled the Hyundai car out saying it was not worth repairing. That hail in 2020 was, was not mixed with fire and blood. So come on people, let's get real about salvation. The things we are seeing now in the world are showing us that we don't want to be around for what's to come. If we aren't around for it, we don't want to die without Christ in our lives because what happens at the very end is eternal damnation. This angel blew his trumpet and one third of the earth was set on fire. One third of the trees were burned and all the green grass was burned up. The second trumpet was blown and a great mountain of fire was thrown on the sea causing one third of the water in the sea to become blood. One third of all things living in the sea died and one third of all the ships on the sea were destroyed. We still have our house and the cars after the hailstorm, thank God. But what is coming is cataclysmic. The blowing of the third trumpet brought a great star falling from the sky, burning like a torch, and it fell on one third of the rivers and on the springs of water. The name of the star was bitterness, and it made one third of the water bitter and caused many people to die from drinking it. I did a search on the internet for contaminated rivers and found articles about the Chattahoochee River area being reopened after part of the river was closed due to health risks from elevated E. coli contamination in metropolitan Atlanta. I saw an article where fish were being tested for cancer causing toxins in Georgia's Ogeechee River. And I saw one where waters along the Ohio River still contaminated following a train, de train derailment and 3 million gallons of contaminated water turning the river in Colorado orange. I just stopped there because there were more articles, but that's not even one third of the earth that we see now. Do you really want to have no water to drink, but you are so thirsty you drink it anyway and die from it? Now after the fourth trumpet was blown, one third of the sun was struck, one third of the moon, and one third of the stars, and they became dark. One third of the day was dark, and also one third of the night. Then John saw and heard a single eagle crying loudly as it flew through the air, saying, Terror, terror, terror to all who belong to this world because of what will happen when the last three angels blow their trumpets. In Revelation 14, John saw an angel flying through the sky carrying eternal good news to proclaim to the people who belong to this world, to every nation, tribe, language, and people. The angel said this, Fear God, give glory to Him. The time has come for Him to sit as judge. Worship Him who made the heavens, the earth, the sea, and all the springs of water. There's even better news. You don't have to wait until the tribulation to do this. You can do it now and only witness the destruction to come. John saw another angel with good news, saying that Babylon is falling, that great city is falling, because she made all the nations of the world drink the wine of her passionate immorality. So we see the victory of the Lord being proclaimed yet again before the battle even happens. 
People stop drinking the wine of passion and immorality. Because John saw yet another angel saying anyone who worships the beast and his statue or who accepts his mark on their forehead or on their hand during the tribulation period must drink the wine of God's anger. You may not live until the tribulation period, but that is determined upon when the rapture actually takes place. If it takes place before your death and you have not accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, inevitably you would not be going up in a rapture and you will be left here to endure what the tribulation period brings with it. God will pour out his anger, full strength, and people will be tormented with fire and burning sulfur, having no relief day or night. Blessed are those who die in the Lord. We know when the second coming, the return of the Lord will happen. It's not imminent like the rapture. The rapture can occur at any moment, and the Lord does not return to the earth during the rapture. He comes in the clouds, and the dead in Christ rise, and those that have not tasted death rise to meet him in the clouds. But the second coming's timing is revealed to us in the Bible. It will occur 2,520 days after the Antichrist signs a covenant with Israel in Revelation 11 and 12. The actual return of the Lord to the earth will occur at the end of the tribulation. I won't go into what happens any further because if the point hasn't been drilled in yet, you are probably just choosing not to get it. Receive your salvation now so that you can be raptured away before the tribulation and return with Christ as witnesses to the destruction that will take place. I believe we are getting a glimpse now that is nothing compared to what will happen. But for believers, the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us.